That was so fun getting to see you in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Denise, it was so much fun being able to take the whole crew and tour the entire showroom, cook with Chef Nicole, and learn about all the ways that One Hope Wines gives back. And speaking of giving back, we're in the private home of the president of the Arizona Wine Growers Association that gives back to the community in a variety of ways, including education and fabulous events throughout Arizona. That's right, Kurt Dunham and his wife Peggy have opened up their private wine cellar for us. Not only does this dynamic duo create a fine bottle of Arizona grown wine, they have an amazing design talent as well and have built a custom home around a wine cellar that we're going to go see right now. Oftentimes we get to spend quality time with a winemaker and learn about his creative abilities that go into the bottle and the, the flavors and the decisions that are made to make a perfect bottle of wine. We are actually in a rare opportunity and we are in Kurt Dunham's private home wine cellar and he has put just as much thought and decision into the design of this, this wine cellar and this wine lounge, if you will. So Kurt, tell us a little bit about your wine cellar, your personal wine cellar, your personal collection, and some of the materials that you chose to create such a beautiful space. Well, Denise, when we first got the idea to build the home, uh, one of the criteria that we were looking at is we wanted to build a great wine cellar because we wanted to begin seriously collecting wine. Mm -hmm. And our first thought was that if we found a mountainside lot, uh, we could build the wine cellar into the mountain. And so we're in Fountain Hills here, which is a very uh, hilly mountainous area right. in the McDowell Mountains. And we found the perfect lot. And when we started digging away, we knew we'd found the home for our wine cellar. Right. So you built the wine cellar and then the house evolved around the wine cellar. Well, uh, yeah, and in an That's indirect, story, in an indirect right? way, right. yeah, but okay. the, the house was very important, but the wine cellar was a very important component of it. Absolutely. And so once we found the spot for the wine cellar, things just kind of flowed from there. So the back wall, I understand, inside the wine cellar, which we're going to go take a peek at in a little bit, is all, all rock, all mountain. Correct. Yeah, it's actually, we cut the, the, the foundation out of the rock, mm -hmm. and so behind the wine cellar wall is rock, okay. which helps to maintain our temperatures. We don't have to climate control it as much as we would if it was a standing room or not designed to be a wine cellar from the start. Right, and I, I know you have an amazing racking system in there, and again, we'll go take a look at that in a little bit, but let's talk about the room we're standing in now. And this is what you call your wine lounge, mm -hmm. and you have selected some beautiful materials to give this that, that contemporary, edgy wine bar feeling, if you will. Let's talk about the material, this countertop that we're standing at right now. What is this? This is Oklahoma sandstone, and we found a small sample of this at a, at a tile store, and even the people at the tile store couldn't identify what it was. So we searched high and dry for a long time until we found somebody that recognized the piece. We were able to obtain it and have it brought in and cut to our specifications. And it's a beautiful piece. It's, it's kind of a simulated petrified wood. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks exactly like a It's actually of sandstone, and it's, it's been waterproof, so it uh, doesn't leave any uh, drink marks, which happen in bars. Right. And we also kind of gave it a, an industrial appearance up down below, and we uh, complemented that with the snap edge uh, granite behind us to give right. a, the kind of bring that rocky uh, formation look to the room that was the it was the genesis of the wine cellar itself. Right, because the exposed edge, the, the chiseled edge on both pieces give it that rock hard surface feel. So it obviously can withstand a lot of weight and we've got a beautiful weighty bottle of wine here. Tell us a little bit about this particular wine and what you've done with this. Well, this is our newest release. This is our 2010 Petit Syrah, the signature. And after the first vintage off of our vineyard in 09, uh, we got such rave reviews about Petit Syrah that we think this is gonna be our signature grape for, for decades to come for the, our vineyard and for the Chiricahua Mountain area. And so we've made a, a really full bodied, uh, bold wine, it's 100% Petit Syrah aged in the majority of new American oak. And we think it's a, a, it's a special wine and we're excited to release it to the public. It just released last week. 
Awesome. And so a uh, few people have tasted it and we're really pleased with the smiles we're getting. Yes, and I have been one of those few people that <laughs> had the opportunity to taste it and it is a fabulous wine. And we were talking earlier that it's a very soft wine for Petite, uh, petite Sra. Yeah, we so. try real hard to uh, bring out the big fruit, the big characteristics of the Petite Sra and the mountain characteristics all the while Meaning a very soft and plush mouth feel. Right. So I understand too that you've also introduced a new white wine as well. Tell that's, us a little bit about that. That's correct. We just released our first white wine. It's a Viognier, which is another Rhone varietal. Uh, we made it in a very crisp uh, Sauvignon Blanc style to be very food friendly. Uh, we don't have a lot of it, so we're looking forward to the 2012 vintage where we have a lot more to put onto the market. Awesome. Now, that wine was produced, that's done in a steel barrel, correct? That's correct. We do all of our whites in stainless steel tanks so far. We are experimenting with using a little bit of French oak to, to make it maybe a Chardonnay kind of style. A, a little buttery feel. Yeah, just yeah. to see what we can do because grapes have never been grown where we are before. Right. And so we're doing some experimenting to see what the potential uh, different nuances we can add to the wine along the way. Mm -hmm. Well, I did have the opportunity to sample that wine as well, and it's a very pretty wine. It's very soft and uh, has a lot of lemon undertones to it, so I was very, very happy with that one as well. You guys have not gone wrong, so. Thanks. I would love now to take a little peek at what's behind that glass door there, because I know you have a fabulous uh, collection of wine, a personal collection that each bottle has its own story, and I understand you and your wife collect wine, and and have memories that some of us collect, as I was saying earlier, ornaments or what have you, you actually collect bottles of wine and each wine in there has its own story, including your own wines. So if we could just go take a little look in there and introduce our viewers to the fabulous artwork that you have in there and talk a little bit about your racking system, that'd be, that'd be awesome. All right, let's go. Okay. So we're actually standing inside the wine cellar, and I have to say it's a little cooler in here than it is out there, but behind us is that mountain wall. This, this entire wall behind us, correct, is part of the mountain that this home was built on. That's correct. And over that wall, we have this incredible racking system, which you don't see in a lot of wine cellars. And I find it very unique, very contemporary, but there's a reason that you chose this racking system. So why don't you share with us why you chosen? Well this is about a 2,000 bottle capacity cellar and we chose this uh, racking system. One, uh, we see wine as art and to be able to see all of the labels very plainly it to me is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It also really helps me find things. I don't right. have to put tags and everything. Sure. And, and for the third thing, for, for utility reasons, it really keeps all of the wine the same temperature. Uh, when you have them buried into diamond racks, which is often used for wine storage, right. Uh, the, the wine rack can have different temperatures within it. That's this, a good point. This way we have great flow around the mm -hmm. bottles and keeps them all uniformly temperature. Right, that's a, that's a really good point because I hadn't even thought about that. But what I did notice is that you do see all of the beautiful labels. And I know, again, I mentioned earlier that every bottle in here means something to you, whether it's your own wine or it's something that you and Peggy had chosen for yourself. And I know that the inspiration for your very own vineyard came with the start of your own collection, correct? So yeah, very much so. When we started to stock the cellar after we completed it, it was quite a daunting task and we had a lot of room. And uh, so we set out to the great wine regions of the world and mm -hmm. began collecting wines and we found ourselves gravitating towards the smaller boutique wineries uh, where we could personally get to know the winemaker and his staff and her right. staff and, and learn a lot about viticulture and winemaking and the marketing of wine and the the whole operation. And so it seemed like we'd bring back cases of wine and they all had stories attached to them. That time we spent at the picnic table with the winemaker. And as we began to consume our wines after collecting a bunch of them, every time we'd pull a bottle out, we'd remember where we were and the great time we had meeting with those people, learning about their wines. And so we felt that if we could replicate that through our own winery, have that same kind of homey feel, that inviting feel, we could be an experience for other people, a learning place, and a place that they would, would bring them great memories as well. Right, right, and you certainly have done that. I mean, just not only with what's in the bottle, but what's on the bottle as well, because you've branded yourself so well with your logo, and it's very recognizable. But I want you to share with us, just pick a bottle of wine and share a story with us. Well, here's a great one here. This is a, a, a winery out of Mendocino, California, called Navarro. Uh, little did we know when we met these folks back in the early 90s that uh, we would model a lot of our marketing 
after their operation. They were a very okay. small operation uh, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. They've become a much larger operation since then, much larger than we will probably ever be. But we got to know this family uh, since, since uh, we, we became familiar with them. The kids have kind of taken over the business. They've kept up their great customer service tradition. And to this day, we're still wine club members, even though we have our own winery now. And so how old is this bottle of wine? Uh, this bottle of wine's from 2010. It's okay. a fairly new release. Okay. But we have bought wines of theirs all the way back in the late 90s. Have you, was, have you had any of them? Have you opened them? Or are they we, still, are they in this room? We've got our... a few of them hanging around. Yeah. I mean, they say the worst, the most expensive bottle of wine you have is the one that goes bad before you can that's, drink it. That's so true. But, yeah. but uh, we, we try to drink them uh, when I think they're going to be... Uh, at their at their premium okay and then and, and not wait too much longer than that and uh, like you said you've got temperature control in here which right. is a whole nother story in and of itself yeah, temperature vibration and mm -hmm. and light are very important to preserve your wines mm -hmm. over the long term but we like to drink our great wines we like to enjoy them i have a saying that uh, if you don't drink great wine your heirs will yeah, and so uh, so we, we try to drink yeah. them before they reach their before they go past their. Well, prime. enjoy them, like you said, they're sure. here, so enjoy them. So outside of this being a functional space, there's a lot of artistic touches in here, beautifully designed. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we wanted to complement the beauty of the the bottles themselves with some innovative artwork here. We had a local artist uh, who had a vision mm -hmm. for the room. And she implemented it beautifully, and we just we just love the ambiance of the room itself. It is gorgeous. Well, I would like to thank you, Kurt, for being here with us today, and to learn more about Lawrence Dunham Vineyards, to learn more about Kurt and his winemaking skills, you can do so by reaching you where? Our website, www.lawrencedunhamvineyards.com. Okay, and you can also learn more by visiting us at finewineanddesign.com. Cosentino, your destination for silestone quartz, granite, and marble countertops throughout Arizona. Visit our showroom, located just north of Warner Road on Priest in Tempe. Turn your house into your dream home with Modern Group. Offering specialty construction services, superior quality craftsmanship, and progressive design solutions for your project. From standard remodeling to highly specialized home overhauls and additions, Modern Group is a full-service general contracting business dedicated to organization, professionalism, and unparalleled project supervision. Start your project today. Visit us at moderngroupaz.com or call 480-596-1100. As we share another season of Thanksgiving and celebration, we'd like to thank you for bringing us into your home. And thank you, Cindy, for sharing the camera with me. It was a joy working with you again. Absolutely, and if you'd like to learn anything more about Denise, our talented crew, and anything that you've seen today on the show, be sure to visit us at finewineanddesign.com. Happy holidays.